Tell us what's happening with Delta Hawk. Where are you right now? What is the prognosis for the immediate future? Well, I know we've been down this path for quite a while, mm -hmm. but we are finally very close for a whole couple, a number of reasons. Um, a couple of years ago, we got seriously funded, and we went from three people to 35. Huge investments in infrastructure, in testing assets, and most importantly, as I said, people. We spent the last year really thoroughly, thoroughly testing our engine, which we believe was releasable. We think it was certifiable as is, but it didn't meet our standards. History has shown that something that's released and certified doesn't necessarily also make it to meet market expectations. You can still have problems. So I'm proud to say our standards are higher than what the regulations require. Anybody who's seen our engine before will see changes. We've changed the head design. We've made better cold weather starting, more fuel efficient, changed exhaust systems, changed structure of the engine, a number of things to really make it an engine we think the market's going to love while reducing weight and reducing cost. We think an important part of aviation is cost. Obviously, that's what's driving people out of the market. So when we release this thing, it's going to be an engine we think that really is, and I hate to use a cliche, a game changer. You're talking about changes and reducing costs. How so? We changed the way the parts are manufactured so that we can take our costs out of it. We worked very thoroughly with some really great suppliers that we deal with, and just some fundamental material changes and so forth that allowed us to get the cost out of the product. When a pilot in the future jumps into his Delta Hawk equipped aircraft, what kind of changes is he going to have to accommodate versus the piston, Lycoming, Continental, or Rotax that he's known heretofore? Well, first of all, of course, he'll be putting in jet fuel, about 40% better fuel efficiency than a gasoline engine, higher altitude performance, but most importantly, less maintenance. If you do have to, you can work on it with wrenches. It doesn't have a lot of sophisticated electronics and so forth. The other thing from a reliability standpoint is we have redundancies built into our induction systems, our air systems, our fuel systems, and our cooling systems. So you can even have failures of all different systems and the engine will still fly. Now we'd of course expect you to go land, but at least you're landing at an airport, not at a cornfield. Where can we expect the Delta Hawk initially implemented? Even though we're not going to release the engine until it's certified, our first market, of course, will be the experimental market because of the STC process to get into the certified aircraft. We have flying velocities, twin velocities, an RV7 program underway. So those will be our initial entries into that field, but we have many more planned as well. The first one I didn't mention is the first is a 180 horsepower version. There will be lower and higher horsepower versions as we move down the road. Obviously, from a commercial standpoint, we picked the high volume ones first, which is why I mentioned RV7 and, and others. So. What does the 2018-2019 timeframe signal for Delta Hawk? Well, I would say confidently we will be releasing this thing in 2019. By the end of 2018, we'll be in the position to release pricing and production dates and so forth. So we are truly getting, we think, very close. Are you looking at the unmanned community at all? Absolutely. We've already have a number of programs we worked on through the years. Most of those we can't talk about, of course. We are AUVSI members. I was a panelist, actually, at the Exponential in Denver a couple weeks ago. So we're really plugged into that community as well. What do you think the general aviation, sport aviation population needs to know in order to be able to look at this credibly and feel like they've selected an engine that can lead them into the future? I think the main thing now is we have behind us dedicated funders who both have the wherewithal to keep us going, but who are aviation passionate. They love aviation. And I think that's what it takes. Aviation, and to me, one word encapsulated, it's passion. And that's what this whole week is around. So we have the people behind us to make sure that we're successful. And they have a track record of, of successful businesses starting from, from scratch. Aero TV is brought to you by Trig Avionics is proud to announce the new 1.3-inch slimline TX56A and TX57A Navcom, featuring a high-resolution display with the graphical CDI, configurable memory, two-play stereo intercom, and a built-in VOR LOC converter. The TX56A will enhance your navigation and communication through all phases of flight. Best hugs get you where you need to go. Our Alpha Bravo Echo Romeo and Heli electric aircraft tugs are designed to safely and powerfully get your aircraft into and out of your hangar easily and efficiently. 
Check us out at bestdogs.com.